Hello and welcome to another a one video. How do muscles grow? There are two ways. Myofibular hypertrophy. This is when the muscle fibers increase in number and the ability of the nervous system to react with your muscles and be able to exert more force and power improves. This is achieved with low volume training sarcoplasmic hypertrophy. This is when the volume of sarcoplasm, the fluid in your muscles, increases, making your muscles look inflated and big. There is far less accompanying strength. This is achieved with high volume training myofibular hypertrophy puts more of an emphasis on strength and you will not get as big as you would if you were to do sarcoplasmic hypertrophy and you won't get as strong if you do myofibular hypertrophy but that's not to say you can't do both. There are plenty of hybrid training programs out there. Muscles are like every cell in our bodies, it is a living organism. Supplied with oxygen and in this case blood supply and nutrients, it grows. Much like the plants we see among us. Except, plants have a different cell body, but nonetheless they are living organism like you, I and the human race. Whenever we tear muscle tissue, the repair or regrowth takes place the next following 24 hours. During resting. The nourishment that was mentioned in the previous paragraph, protein aids in building muscle. The true culprit is testosterone which develops muscle size. Everyone has testosterone, however ladies internal system does not manufacture enough of the male hormone to develop the muscularity a guy displays. When you exert resistance on the muscle fibers they tear. Mind you, there are very small tears called micro tears. Then when you eat, the protein is synthesized and the muscle fibers are regrow while you rest. After they repair they are now stronger and adapted to the resistance that tore them. Does muscle only grow on rest days? There are two phases that a muscle undergoes catabolic and anabolic. Catabolic means breaking down. Resistance TRAINING weightlifting, in particular breaks down the tissues, causing microscopic tears in them. That's it. Yeah, all that sweating it out for breaking it down. The role of the exercise ends right there. Anabolic is the rebuilding regeneration phase. In a layman's language, it's when your brain gives a signal to your body that a particular muscle which was broken down earlier needs a repair and has to grow back stronger and bigger than it was to accommodate the extra demand put on the body by the weight lifting. This process requires water, food and sleep. Yes. Resting doesn't only mean not working out that particular muscle for a day in between. It means getting a sound sleep of minimum 7-8 hours. Even 8-10 hours, if possible, isn't bad. During REM sleep, your body's production of growth hormone increases, which aids in the repairing and rebuilding of muscles post-workout. Now how much rest has to be given to a particular muscle varies, depending upon whether we are talking about a big muscle like quads, back, pecs or small one like arms. It also depends on how hard your previous workout was. Whether it comprised more of compound movements or isolation. Leaving 48 hours in between is usually considered to be a safe window. Also heavy workout is strenuous on the CNS central nervous system. It's good to have a couple of days of rest in a week to let the CNS recuperate. Upper lower rest upper lower rest rest the above weekly schedule takes care of most rest period, along with adequate frequency and intensity. What muscle grows the fastest? Chest is the muscle group that grows quickest. As a general rule of thumb. Always muscle groups that are larger in size like thighs, chest, etc. Are easier to break down and always grow quicker. Smaller muscles like triceps or calves are a little slow because the size is small and muscle fibers are thick. These are hard to break and they take time to recover. Another reason for chest being the easiest muicle is its use in compound exercises. Almost every compound exercise uses so